Hey, and welcome to the latest My PT Hub podcast with me, Ryan Hallett. Today, I am joined by Sophie. Sophie. <laughs> Sophie works here at My PT Hub, um, but the reason that she was dying to come on this podcast today is because Sophie has an amazing experience and background in personal training. Um, I mean, I'm not going to steal the thunder. I'm going to let you explain it all. So, let's start from the beginning. How did you get into it? Um, so, I was always into fitness and exercising, like, through school and at college. Um, so, it was, like, my main interest and my passion. So, that's what I decided to sort of mainly study at college. Straight and from college into yeah. it? And then, yeah, straight from college into my level two and level three. Yeah. Um, and I did sports massage as well. Um, and then, yeah, that was like a three-month course. And then I went straight into my first PT job from that. Didn't care on the massaging? No, I didn't like the massaging. Why didn't you like the massaging? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when we were doing all our courses and everything, we had like a day each week where people would come in for a free massage. Yeah, but they milk that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I always got like massive, big rugby blokes. Yeah. And so it was just, yeah, it was Didn't just enjoy it. nice. Exhausting. Must have helped though. Yeah, it was good. It was good. And I really learned a lot more from my personal training uh, because of the sports massage, because we went a lot more depth into like muscles and origins and insertions and things like that. So where did you go from, like when you when, when you do a level two and level three, where did you go from there? Um, so when I qualified, I then got my first PT job at Fitness First in Brighton. Oh, yeah. Um, that was on a self-employed basis. Um, like, it was good, but it probably wasn't the best place to start out just qualified just because I needed a bit more experience and yeah. basic pay would have been better than just going straight self-employed. Um, but, yeah, so I stayed there for a bit and then I went on to David Lloyd um, and I stayed there for three years. And how were the hours? That's hard. the main thing about yeah, personal hard. training, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I would start a lot at like 5.30 in the morning um, and sometimes I'd finish at like 10 at night. Did it eventually have its toll on you, would you think? Um, or did you, or I, were you okay with it? At the start, when you're trying to build it all up, you're yeah. happy to work all the hours in the world and you don't care, but you get to a point where you're like, I need to plan my days better. So I got to the point where I'd do like mornings or I'd do evenings. Yeah. Um, and then it was like, hey, um, and I probably would have stayed there longer. The only reason I didn't was because um, me and my husband decided to go to Kuwait. So we moved to the Middle East. This is the juicy bit. This is the good <laughs> bit. Um, so yeah, we moved to the Middle East. Look, let's, let's talk about how you got to that decision. Just really randomly, we were like, mm. Out of all the places, Kuwait. Yeah, like, I, I hadn't even heard of it. Well, neither have I until you started. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, we were like, we just fancy doing something different. You know, yeah. we were just in a bit of a rut and we yeah. were like, we just fancied a change. So we started initially looking at the cruise liners to oh, go and cool. work on the cruises. Um, what, so personal then, training on a cruise line? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that was even a thing. Oh, yeah. So we were looking at that and then we became like part of a recruitment agency. So they would email us jobs and stuff. And a job came up in Q8. Yeah. <laughs> and we just decided to apply for it. We had an interview and... I think that was in like the November, and then they said, "Oh, can you start in the Feb?" And oh, yeah, and really then, so quick we change over out, then. Yeah, we flew out there um, on my birthday actually in the February. Yeah. Oh no way! Mm. So what what did you originally go over there to do? Like, was it still face to face? Yes. Yeah, so we went out initially with a company um, who employed us, and it was all face to face PT in people's houses. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So Makes it sense. was like. A lot of like high end clients, some royal family. Nice. Um, yeah, so it was it was really decent decent clients, and it was all in their houses, home PT. So we had all the kit in our cars and stuff like that. Um, yeah, unfortunately, the company that we were working for it didn't work out, but we ended up staying and then just set up on our own out there. Oh, and how long were you doing it on your own out there for? Six years. Six years. Mm -hmm. So how long have you employed with this company for? Under a year. Oh, right. So that was a really small amount of time. Yeah. Then you had six years over yeah. there. And you what, you kept the clients throughout the whole time? Yeah, so we kept the clients and then built up new clients. But yeah, so I initially, when we first moved out there, I was doing like 12-hour days pretty much. Um, back to back, just driving to each house. Oh, wow. Um, but then when we started working for ourselves, it got a bit easier. I would do like maybe eight sessions a day, but then with the driving as well. Yeah. It was quite a lot. And if, anyone know, if anyone knows Q8, the traffic is horrendous. Oh, don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. 
God, yeah, no, that was, I did not realise it was that much of a heavy lift then, really. Yeah. Pardon the pun. Yeah, and like I started even earlier when I worked out there, so I'd like my first client would be at around five, so I'd get up and leave at about four thirty. Wow. So what was the deciding factor to leave? I mean, my guess is probably no alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I actually can't believe I spent six years in a dry country. Yeah, that is crazy. And there was the benefit of having Dubai on the doorstep, so that was good for the weekends. Yeah, that's true. Um, also, you could just fly over to Dubai. Yeah, literally, it was like an hour and fifty minutes on on the plane. So. Oh wow! And yeah. is that what they that most weekends? Or? No, so maybe like mm, twice every two months type of thing. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Um, but yeah, so every year we were out there, we were like, we're going to go home next year. Oh. Well, so what was the main thing then? You, you were like, right, we, we, our time's up here, like we need to go back to the UK. So we always, we were out there to save money to come home and buy a house. That was what we right. wanted to do. Um, so, but you get very much caught up in the lifestyle out there. And the first few years we just would earn our money and spend our money, we'd travel and and I think you've got to do that when you go out there because it's a great yeah. opportunity to be able to do things like that. But um yeah, like I said, every year we were like next year, we'll save and then go home. And then yeah, we got to like year five and we were like, right, we're gonna set a date yeah. and then we decided we'd definitely go home the end of the sixth year. And yeah. Wow. And we booked our flights and then we were like, that's it, we have to go. <laughs> Instant regret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got, we landed in the UK and we were like... Freezing. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, and it, it all actually ended up working out really well, so... And you um, moved into your house shortly after? Uh, yeah, so we came back and we did about a year, like living with parents and stuff, and bought, yeah, pretty much a year later. So a year after moving back, we bought a house. Nice. And how were your clients after you left? Yeah, good. So I managed to keep quite a few on board for online coaching. Um, and a few of them might even do face to face over Zoom or FaceTime. Oh, I see. And uh, well, the whole, I mean, the whole point of this podcast really is to like understand the journey that you've gone through and what it is that you're doing now. Because you are still online training, although you work here. Yeah. And how is the online training? Yeah, good. I mean, I do sometimes miss face to face because I do like that. I think one everyone on one. does really, don't yeah. they? Yeah. So, I mean, some people love all online coaching, but I do like that interaction. Um, but yeah, for me, it's worked really well because most of my client base is my clients that I had from living abroad. So, so you've kept though. them? Yeah, it's good that I can still train them. And are they all right with it? They enjoy the online coaching? Because obviously you were face to face with them for so long. Yeah, no, some of them require more attention. So those clients I tend to go on the face, yeah. like FaceTime or Zoom calls to like coach them through their sessions. Um, but then I have some others who are like fine with going to the gym and getting their programs done so yeah it's good oh that's good and uh what software do you use by any chance so <laughs> my pc have of, oh, of course <laughs> of course you do so how did that all come about because you were actually using it prior to working here right yeah so i i wasn't really aware of like many like training softwares it was only because i signed up for some personal training myself with a coach and the coach i signed up with used my PC hub and that was what made me like get used to it see how it worked and I loved it and then um, when I was starting to advertise more of my stuff I decided to use it so what made you work here so I don't think I've actually (laughs) ever asked you that question (laughs) so obviously when we came back I wanted to stay in the online training I wanted to stay in like coaching and stuff and stay stick with my training I did want to stick with like full-time PT However, I didn't want to feel like I was going backwards by having to go to a gym, potentially do gym hours, do like build up clients there. Mm. So obviously we got a house, I had a mortgage as well to pay. So I don't know, the the fact that it was in the same area as I live, it's software. Yes. You did? Yeah. Um, It's the software that I use and it's still in fitness. Yeah. So yeah. So how's it actually, has it helped you in, in your online training at all? I definitely think it made me more aware of what the software could do because I think I was definitely only using it for like limited things, whereas now I there's so much more scope to it than I thought. I think we we both think that, don't we? Mm. Like a lot of people that come onto the software, they well, I mean, the word overwhelming comes along yeah. quite a lot, doesn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah. But I guess if you've never seen any sort of software before, 
But when you come into something like that, it's a bit like, wow. I think it just, there's so many features and it does so many different things. And yeah. so many trainers feel like they have to use everything. They don't. And they don't. <laughs> you only really need to use what you need to use, so. I mean, you've spoken to what? Honestly, hundreds of trainers now, yeah. really, haven't you? <laughs> like, over the course of the few years that you've been here, like, so many trainers. And there isn't really a set way, is there? No, everyone does it differently. So the, the questions that come through, they're like, oh, how do other people do it? It's like, yeah. wow, that's it's like probably one of the most difficult, well, that and price yeah. are the two difficult ones, aren't they? Yeah. So, yeah, everyone, every trainer is different. What trainers offer are different. So that all, like... Depend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it'll just depend what it is that they're offering, yeah, really, exactly. isn't it? Like, and, that, and that will go, like, go in line with the cost of it. Yeah. And because, if, like, again, like how much time and effort people put in as a trainer... So some people are offering generic plans and don't have to put that much time in after they've created those. So obviously things like that are going to be at a lower price cutter. point. Yeah. Um, and then you've got trainers that like just offer one-to-one -one coaching. And obviously that's going to be at a higher price point because it's all personalised and specific to the client. But it is crazy though, isn't it? Because we see some people that have like 30 clients and some people have thousands of clients, but they earn the same amount of money. Yeah. It does seem strange, doesn't it? Yeah. And by that, there is no right or wrong way of doing it. No, yeah. What would you say is like the one thing that you like when people get into the software that's the mistake that they make? Did you see anyone like make any mistakes or be like, oh, actually, maybe try something else first? Um, so I think a lot of people, especially with like over the last few years, people getting more into online coaching. Yeah. A lot of trainers get the software and don't actually know what they want to be able to offer. So, it's a difficult thing, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of I speak to a lot of trainers, and they're like, "So I want to be an online, like I want to be an online trainer." But I don't know what to do. And they don't know where to start. And then I'm like, "Okay, well, what is it that you want to actually be able to offer clients?" And then they don't know. So I do think having it in your head exactly what services you want to offer as an online coach, whether that be the more generic programs or one-to-one -one personal training. Mm. Or even sometimes a mixture of both, but yeah. yeah, having the plan of what you want to offer. Definitely. I think the key word there is like what they want to do as well. Yeah. Because both work, but like if you don't want to have thousands of people that may contact you, may not, depending how much you charge. Yeah. And you want to just be like, actually, do you know what? I'd like to go in a bit more depth with like a smaller amount of people, but charge more money. More for it. Yeah. But then there's also a lap over where they try to do both. Yeah. And that doesn't always work. No. I mean, sometimes. Some people are really successful with it. But yeah, well, I think sometimes when you just go all in at the beginning. Yeah. And like they usually work for like the larger followings, don't yeah. they? Let's be honest. So if you've got like a large social media following, they're like, well, I can get away with charging seven ninety nine a month for something generic. But actually, yeah. if you want to train with me personally, then that's going to cost you a lot. Yeah. Or a good chunk. Yeah. And I think that's the other thing is that People see these sort of businesses be really successful, but they are successful because they have that following and they're putting content out of like via websites or social mm. media accounts. Yeah. And that obviously does help massively. Oh, hugely. Like people try to compare themselves, don't they? Yeah. Which isn't always the worst thing to do. No. Like if you see like a business doing well, you're like, right, okay, how, how have they set that? Because it's, it's obviously done them well. Yeah. But if you've obviously got that platform to begin with, it's obviously a lot. Easier. easier yeah you've got people to sell to well, that's what i mean so like for people that are starting out what would you always say like would you say go to the gym first is that like the go-to sort of or for online i mean if, it depends what you want to do like if you want to go straight into online training or would you say you have to go to the gym first do the no, one-to-one -one stuff think now i definitely don't think you do have to go in and do the one-to-one -one stuff first i do think it definitely helps but i yeah. think now a lot of trainers probably don't do that um but again, I think it's putting that time into like planning, deciding yeah. what you want to offer, how you're gonna like dedicate your time for the week, um, like getting content together to put out on your like social media and things like that. Because ultimately, if you are gonna just sell online coaching or programs, mm. you need to have people to sell to. So you've got to have that mm. audience there. And I guess that one social media way is always better than others for some people, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because obviously there's so many different types of coaches out there. Like you've obviously done the sort of, well, would you say generic in the sense of going to the gym, then getting clients that way? Would, would you like say that that's like the most? To, I feel oh, like used that to used be. to be the the most common thing because online coaching's only really. 
And when you think about it, it's difficult actually, isn't it, when you go straight into online training? Yeah. Because you're like, well, how do I get my clients? Yeah, that's why I just think if you don't have the, the audience or following there, it's a lot more tricky. So what would your advice be? If you're going straight into online training from your qualification, like what would you do? Like How would you go about setting it up? So Knowing what you know now through my PT hub it doesn't even have to be that way but the social channels all that sort of stuff yeah so I would definitely like have a schedule for the week about when I'm gonna plan like content for social media and um, definitely offering some sort of free or discounted trial mm. to get people on board and then once they see like what you're offering and get a taster of that then you can obviously upsell to them um, but yeah, definitely getting the audience on social media first because mm. then you can start creating packages and advertising it there and then you've got more people to then like potentially buy those packages as well. Yeah. What would be your social media choice? TikTok? Is that a bit <laughs> I'm easy? more of an Instagram. Oh, Instagram, yeah. Yeah. I haven't really caught up with TikTok. No, I am, no. Like, can't quite do it, but some people do so <laughs> yeah, well do out so, of it. Yeah, so well. Like, I saw someone on our platform the other day and they had, oh, like, they got like, what was it, hundreds of sales. I mean, they were doing obviously the cookie cutter yeah, sort of yeah, approach. Yeah. They've got hundreds of sales just from this TikTok thing. Whatever works. Right? Right, whatever works for you. But amazing. I mean, so your plan is now obviously going to continue with your online coaching. Yep. Are you going to try and expand that? Are you happy with the amount that you've got? Um. Yeah. I'd always. I would always like more. My thing at the moment is just time. So with working full time job here and doing that, I don't want to have too many that I can't mm. give the attention that they need um but yeah ultimately i'd love to go um like back out to q8 for the yep. odd few weeks a year um and do like face to face with my clients out oh, there oh that'd be nice yeah almost like a catch-up as well yeah Get or like for like ramadan so like when they're yeah. all doing their month fasting like that's a great time they all love training then so um yeah that would be and let's speak about your husband yeah kieran <laughs> um he is also in the fitness industry yep he has a uh, well, a few jobs. <laughs> so yeah. I'm told at the moment. Um, so, but yeah, he worked, he's obviously still does the gym side of it, right? Yeah. So he wanted to continue that? Yeah, no, definitely. So he wanted to continue with his uh, face-to-face PT as well as online. Um, so he manages a corporate gym. And um, does he enjoy that? Yeah, he does. I mean, there's definitely more admin than he would like. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if you can tell. You know, I mean, he may not ever tell you, but like, which one do you think he prefers? The online side of it or more like the face-to-face? Or is he quite content with the both? He does, li- he does like both, but I think ultimately he would do all online. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And like, does he still have his Q8 clients? Yeah, so he's got some Q8s. He's got actually a lot of... Um, clients from like round here and from from his job now um, in the UK as well so oh really yeah oh but he had like he kept the majority sort of like what you did when yeah you were he, there. he kept a, a bit less than me but um yeah he's picked up loads from working at the gym he works at now oh, so course. he's got that and then obviously he's got his, his new venture at the moment yeah <laughs> god you two are so busy aren't you <laughs> so busy so busy but it's all like round fitness you're all like you're still in the industry like yeah. it's still and you're still enjoying it? Yeah, no, definitely. Well, that's the most important thing. Yeah, because it's one of the industries that people don't stay in very long, isn't it? So. Well, is it 90% of trainers? Yeah, something Not over like the that. first 12 months? Yeah. Which needs to change. Yeah. Like, needs to change. And, like, I do worry, like, I, I genuinely do worry that it, when it goes all online a little bit, that it will, people will not see the face-to-face side and understand, like, the movements and see the movements all the time because things yeah. change, don't they? Yeah, like definitely. Things and like, and uh, yeah, I do think that that sort of needs to change. Like people still do want to go to the gym, but obviously you can still do like the face to face stuff, but also do a bit of online on the side. Yeah, definitely. And remember, you're always going to have clients that wouldn't do one or the other. Oh, so always. So there's always going to be the the client that wouldn't do online coaching because they want someone to stand there, push them, make sure they're doing everything correctly. Yeah. Um and for the accountability of actually like showing up for the session. Yeah. Because ultimately, if people have that appointment booked in and they're going to the gym to meet someone, they're more likely to go than yeah. if they're going That literally their own. sounds like you're speaking from... Uh, from experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from people that you have in Q8 that will still want the face-to-face stuff, like even if it's online, not just giving them a programme, letting them crack on. 
They can't do that, no. No, yeah, there's there's a lot of people who they they need <laughs> they that. need to know. Yeah. <laughs> they need to know. They definitely need that accountability. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do as well. <laughs> Um, see, that wasn't so bad, was it? No, it was okay, actually. You enjoyed it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, thank you very much for joining me, of course. Thanks for having me. No, you're more than welcome. <laughs> Should we do it again? <laughs> so time next yes, of course. Uh, thank you very much for joining the podcast. Uh, if you have any questions for either of us, please do get in touch with our support team. Um, and we'll speak to you soon.